One common source of confusion when it comes to devices that access the internet is how much bandwidth or internet speed these devices need in order to have good internet performance. The good news is this is actually really straightforward. You just need to know where to look. So in this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to detail how you can easily determine how much bandwidth your devices need and in turn, how this impacts the internet plan you should be getting for your home network. When it comes to the amount of bandwidth your device needs to have good internet performance, the actual device type doesn't really matter. If we're talking about your Apple TV, a mobile phone, or a laptop, the actual device type has no bearing on the amount of bandwidth that's needed for good performance. What does matter though is the actual internet activity that's being carried out with that device. In other words, if you're just surfing the internet and checking email, you'll need a certain level of bandwidth, but if you're streaming ultra high definition video from YouTube TV or youtube.com, then you'll need a different level of bandwidth. So the question is, how do you know how much bandwidth is required for each of these different types of internet activities? This is where things get really easy. And I say that because there are published values that you can use as a reference. The Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, this is a group that's responsible for regulating internet communication. They actually have gone ahead and they have published minimum download speed values for different activities on the internet. The FCC has published an official document detailing these minimum bandwidth requirements. I'll link to that down below in the description section for your reference. But in the meantime, let's take a look at a table that I've put together that details exactly the minimum bandwidth requirements that the FCC has suggested. So as you can see in this table, the more complex the internet activity you're performing on your device, the more bandwidth you need. So if you're doing very simple things, just checking email, doing some Google searches, you only need about one megabit per second of bandwidth. Conversely, if you're doing the most bandwidth intensive activity, you're streaming ultra high definition 4K video, you'll need at least 25 megabits per second of bandwidth in order to support that activity. One thing to keep in mind here is that these are minimum bandwidth requirements. So if you're putting together an estimate of what your internet plan should look like, and the total bandwidth you need in your internet plan, then you might wanna add some additional bandwidth as a cushion. You wanna make sure that you have good performance when performing these activities, so just make sure you don't have the bare minimum. Make sure there's some extra built in there. Another thing to consider here is that these minimum bandwidth requirements are on a per device basis. So in other words, if you have two devices streaming ultra high definition video, you'll need twice as much bandwidth. And I've put together an example here to show you exactly what this means when it comes to your internet plan. All right, so let's say you have an internet plan that provides you with 100 megabits per second of bandwidth, and you have one device in your home network. As you can see in this example, it's a laptop. Now let's say with this laptop, you're on YouTube, you're constantly streaming video. This means you need at least 25 megabits per second of bandwidth in order to have good internet performance. So with 100 megabits per second of available bandwidth, you're only using 25 megabits per second. This additional 75 megabits per second, this doesn't improve your performance. It doesn't do anything for your existing session with YouTube. This is just bandwidth that's not being used. And this is a common misconception when it comes to internet speed and devices that connect to the internet. Many people think that the more available bandwidth for a device, the better the performance that device will have on the internet. And that's not really true. We basically just wanna make sure we at least have the minimum bandwidth requirements. Ideally, we have a little extra bandwidth for a cushion there to ensure we get good performance. But as long as we have that, any additional bandwidth in other words, is really just kind of wasted. But now let's take a look at this example. If we add more devices to our home network and we have four laptops, they're all streaming YouTube at the same time, we need four times as much bandwidth. 
we need at least 100 megabits per second of available bandwidth from our internet plan. Okay, and as you can see here, we have 100 megabits per second with our internet plan, and this is where things could start to get a little interesting because with a minimum of 25 megabits per second of bandwidth needed for each YouTube streaming session, you can see here that if any other devices are added to this home network, you could very easily go over the available 100 megabits per second provided by your internet plan. So this is really a fine line that we need to balance here. We want to make sure that we have enough bandwidth to support all of the devices in our home network. But as we saw in that first example there, we don't want to have so much bandwidth that we're not going to use it all. So this is what you need to consider if you're trying to figure out which internet plan fits well for your home network. All right, so now you have a resource to determine how much bandwidth each of the devices in your home network needs. And this is something I suggest you continue to refer to whenever making decisions about your home network or evaluating the performance of the devices on your home network. If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And lastly, if you like the content that I'm putting out on my channel, I ask you to please subscribe and come along for the ride. I'm gonna to continue to put out more content like this moving forward, and I'm sure there'll be other tips and tricks that might be just as useful. As always, thank you for watching this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.